everyone, this is Arielle, one half of Soju for Two, and it has been positively ages, I don't know, maybe like six months or even a year since I've done a talkie video with you guys where to sit down and chat. Now a large part of that has definitely been the fact that I'm never home during the day and the only time to film in this tiny little apartment is daylight because then you get this beautiful lighting. Um, also right now if you can hear water running it's because it is so cold in Seoul that if your water is not constantly running it's highly likely your pipes are going to freeze. So there's water running. Um, I wanted to make a quick video with sort of five like ways to make your trip to Tokyo easier and I mostly just wanted to make this because I went to Tokyo for five days and I had this amazing time and it was so easy and just like wonderful and I went everywhere in the city that I possibly could go um, and while I was doing that I was sort of like I feel like I should share this because other people have this like sense that Tokyo is insanely expensive and it is pretty expensive um, but if you sort of navigate the ways that you like can work it out to make it pretty inexpensive. So I was there for six days altogether but five like full days and I spent under like 350 um, like US dollars which is really inexpensive and a big chunk of that was like one restaurant um, that I wanted to go to in particular and everything else I went like from one side of the city over and over again and I wanted to give you guys some, some tips. So the first one is to as soon as you get to the airport get this. This is the PASMO card and actually if you return this you can get like 500 yen back which is like five dollars but I just wanted to keep it so that I have it on my next trip, but also because I kind of like, it was cute, I don't know, I thought it was fun to keep, and it works to show you guys what it is. So basically, this is a travel card, but you can also use it on buses, on subways, on, um, you can use it at like 7-Elevens and convenience stores, and this is basically your whole life in Japan. So what I notice, a lot of foreigners um, and tourists don't get one of these. They, they buy individual tickets at every single station they go to, and this is like such a time saver because you just put the money on this your life will be easy i recommend putting like at least 30 or 40 dollars on it right away so like 4,000 yen because your trip from the airport to the city will probably cost you and this is another point that i wanted to make for you guys it'll probably cost you um around 15 dollars so like 1,500 yen but it goes really high and what i noticed when i was waiting in the line to get my um first pasmo card you can get it at the counter uh, there is a, this like Skyliner, which is definitely the like the best way to travel, like the most luxurious. Um, and I don't think you do have to transfer to, but depending on where you're going, because it's likely that you're gonna go somewhere off that line. But it is like a seventy to seventy-five to eighty dollar ticket per person, um, just for one way from Narita into the city. And I was standing there and I'm like, what is going on? And I had asked at the information counter, so not at <clears throat> the ticket counter where you buy the um, you know travel tickets, but at the information counter, what's the cheapest way to get from here into the city to where I was staying in um, Abisu or Ibisu? Um, and she was like, oh, well, it's $11 if you take this one or $12.50 if you take this one, which is like 10 minutes faster. So it took me an hour and 10 minutes um, from Narita to Ibisu, which is close to like Harajuku and <clears throat> Shibuya. Um, and if I had taken the $70 one, it would have been an hour. So there's not a huge time difference, yet it's so much more expensive. And I just saw person after person in front of me buying this Skyliner, and they probably spent as much on their tickets from the airport into the city as I did on my whole trip. Um, so definitely, definitely ask for the cheapest way. Go to an information counter and just ask them. They'll give you all of that those details. Um, so that will save your life. I took the Sky Access line into... Um, I think Napori and then from Napori I took to Ibisu so you should absolutely do it it's like will save your life the third thing I want to talk about is um, a Wi-Fi egg and the reason why this is like so important um, is that unlike Seoul if you're coming from Seoul where there is literally Wi-Fi everywhere public transportation has Wi-Fi like city Wi-Fi is absolutely the best when you go to Tokyo there is city Wi-Fi they'll tell you that but I had trouble connecting all the time and it was constantly like losing service. Lots of cafes don't have free Wi-Fi. Um, they don't offer Wi-Fi like with their pretty expensive cafe prices. Um, so I'd say that getting a Wi-Fi egg is essential on a trip. Also, like the reason I could go anywhere and feel comfortable doing that is that I could see like when the trains were coming, how much they were, what's the cheapest train. Like I had all that information at my disposal because I had Wi-Fi the whole time I had internet you know, capabilities. 
Um, so what I did was I pre-ordered a Ninja Wi-Fi egg. I'll put the info down below so you guys can do it too. And it was $45, so like 4,500 yen. Um, but I paid with my American credit card. So, you know, you can do that too on their website. And I know you might be like a little worried, like, is this going to be sketchy? Like, not at all. It was perfect. I went to the airport on the second floor. I picked it up and then I returned on the third floor, which is actually where departures are. So that is perfect. It was very convenient. If you have trouble finding the location of the, the ninja, just go to an information desk, ask them, and they'll know. Um, don't just wander around for hours searching for it because like the sign is pretty small and there's a, a thousand Wi-Fi rentals. The reason why you want to do it online before you get there, I think they need at least two days in advance, is that they will basically um, at the airport charge you like 80 or $90 and mine was half that price for six days, unlimited internet and the Wi-Fi egg had definitely a full day's charge because I would leave the house at about 6.30 and I wouldn't get home until like 10 p.m. and I had the whole day. I do recommend bringing a portable battery for either your Wi-Fi egg or for your cell phone if that's what you take photos on. Um, but like, for me, I had two um, chargers, like two uh, personal batteries, and both of those were more than enough for the day. Usually I just used one in a day, and that was fine. Um, and the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is Capsule Hotel. So every time I've been to Tokyo, I've stayed in Capsule Hotels. There's a lot of a reason that I do this is that um, Tokyo is very expensive on the hotel side of things, and places are beautiful, and it's small, um, but if you stay in a capsule hotel, which is basically just like a tiny room, I think I'll insert a picture here for you guys, um, they are very small, but you know, very clean. It's not like a hostel that you've been to before. Everything is clean daily. And since I stayed at the same capsule hotel this time for five days, I really saw the routine of the of that um, hotel. And I stayed at uh, Dosi Ibisu. And they also have a sauna included. So for that price, and basically all five nights um, was about $90 including tax, um, which is, I think, very reasonable because that's usually like one night at a regular hotel in, um, and like more, a regular hotel in Tokyo. So Basically, I had to check out every day, but I could leave my stuff in my locker, which was fine. I only had one, one like small bag because uh, I just brought enough clothing just for exactly for five days. I didn't overpack. I know how to like to do that, so that's really important. But the biggest thing is you have to be very quiet in capsule hotels. It's not the kind of place where it's like a hostel where people are like joking and partying. It's definitely not that vibe. It's you know a very like you know grown up and mature sort of situation where everyone's coming in, they're going to bed, um, it's just really a place to sleep and lay your head, which is ideal for me because I'm just out the whole day anyway. The um, showers and the sauna were kept like immaculately clean. I could see the, the um, women cleaning it like every hour. They would go in and clean everything, they're like, disinfecting. Like, I felt very, very comfortable and happy with the situation. It was so inexpensive and I think it's just ideal. Um, and most of the nights there was like, not that many people there with me except for when it snowed like the whole place was packed that night because a lot of people were staying but I did stay like in the middle of a week so it's not like the busiest time so again the price is probably more inexpensive then as well. The last thing I think that would make your life easier in Tokyo is this little um, purse. Now the reason I say that is because it has a place to put cash. Because in Tokyo, pretty much, um, you can use cards at a lot of places, but it's kind of like no one uses credit cards. Everyone pays for ca with cash. And coins. So a coin point purse is essential. Now, the funny thing about this is that in Seoul, like, no one pays in cash. Pretty much everyone uses cards. So I haven't been in that, like, frame of mind where I needed um, a coin purse. But this saved my life in Tokyo. made my life so much easier. And also the Pasmo card, if you put it in here, I don't even have to take out the card. I can still scan it because it goes through um, the purse. So that was really, really useful um, just, like, to make life easier. Now, just a couple, like, cultural things that I think that are really important and to remember um, is that, you know, Japan is a very respectful society and people on like public transportation are very quiet. You're not allowed to use your cell phone on the subways. Um, so just remember that. And if you are, you can use them obviously like if you're listening to music or something, but actually listening to music is kind of frowned upon because you're supposed to be like aware of your surroundings. Um, but you can obviously do that. And like talking on the subway, like you should really keep that to a minimum. Everyone's quiet. You can have thousands of people on there and they're quiet. Also, when walking, for the most part, you're going to stay to the left-hand sides of things, which for me is counterintuitive because in Seoul, it's to the right. In New York, it's to the right. So this is one of the things you have to get used to. 
And it is kind of a big deal because a lot of people, they like follow those rules really strictly and the people move just really well all together. Um, so it's a very well organized society. And I just would highly recommend, you know, just being respectful when you go places and you shouldn't have any problems. If you're worried about things like subways and getting around, if you do ask people at the terminal, they'll help you. They usually speak English really well. And I just found that with by having a Wi-Fi egg, my life was just so much easier because Google Maps you can um, put in both locations and it'll tell you exactly how to get there. It'll tell you the prices. Um, and the reason why the prices vary so much from like, you know, $2 to $6 for a subway ride is that they're privatized lines. And that's why you actually have to go outside a building sometimes to go to, a, to make a transfer because they're totally different um, companies own them or different you know, businesses own them. So it is a little bit of a you know, struggle at first if you're not used to it, but definitely hang in there because it is an amazing city you should visit. And if you have more questions about tips for saving money while you're there, please let me know. Bye guys.